Right, uh, Phila Deloid was on the show last week. Let's talk about herself. Yeah, let's start by saying, wasn't she a great guest? She I was. mean, yeah, such a such a terrific guest. So this is and just the, but and also just intrinsically fascinating that you know, life in theatre haven't done a movie before. Oh, Mamma Mia! And then as a follow up, oh, The Iron Lady. And then this is movie number three. I do feel, incidentally, that I should say. You know, I because I went back and I watched my review of Mamma Mia, uh, and I say, you know, look, the the reason that thing works is because the songs are indestructible. It's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. And actually, you know, I think just as opinions change, I think I probably was unfair to it, because the thing is, I've now seen Mamma Mia four or five times, and every time I see it, I burst into tears. And you said that thing about, you know, if you don't watch it, Mark will start singing hits from the from the film, and I think I was unfair to it because. Whatever I thought the problems with it, it worked. I mean, it's a story about female friendship and it worked. And so I, you know, I'd like to officially retract my criticism of Mamma Mia. I, but it was a good review because it had lots of ABBA song titles in there. So I know, I know. I was really, really proud of that. I think I was probably a bit too proud of that. Anyway, so um, this was at Sundance 2020. Um, and then it was due to open in the UK and then... COVID struck and it was picked up by Amazon for streaming release. But now it's getting a theatrical release through Picture House, which um, uh, Phil did always saying she was very pleased about. Um, uh, so co-written, it's called Herself, co-written by Claire Dunn, who also stars as Sandra, who's an Irish woman with young daughters, desperately needs to find a new home away from her partner. She finds online a plan that shows you how you can make a house for a fairly small amount of money. However, the benefit system isn't set up for that. It's not, you know, that doesn't come under the plan. So then Peggy, played by Harriet Walter, who has a big house and a big garden plus a family connection to Sandra, says, you know, I think this is a good idea. And there's a reason that she kind of feels that she owes her something. You can make the house on my land. Here's a clip. A house? Our own house? Mm. At the bottom of the garden? Like a fairy house. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Can we help? Can I have a builder's hat? We'll see. The only thing is, girls, and this is really important, right? We can't tell anyone. Not anyone in school. Not nanny, not granddad, and especially, especially not daddy. Why? I'm just going by what Ado the builder said. He said that's the rules, and you've seen him, right? Mm -hmm. Don't want to mess with him, do you? No. no. So we have to keep this to ourselves, yeah? Our own special secret. Like Black Widow? Sort of. What's that? Oh, it's just a code word. It's better you don't know. <laughs> so, they start to build the house, and the rest of the story then occupies this so the strange space somewhere between, I mean, on the one hand, you know, realist story about a real struggle, which actually has, you know, universal story appeal because it's, you know, it's a, the, the, the plights that are portrayed on screen are real and recognisable, but also has a fairy tale element. Yeah. I mean, I interviewed Harriet Walter uh, at the BFI on Monday, who's, you know, the other part of the, she's the person who gives the, gives the land. And she said that what happened was that, that they all knew each other through theatre stuff and that Claire Dunham sat down and, you know, got together the script, which she shares credit with uh, Malcolm Campbell. And then Phil Lloyd made it happen because Phil Lloyd makes things happen because she's had, as you quite rightly said, Mamma Mia and then the Iron Lady. Mamma Mia, which was the biggest selling musical of Evs Evs, and then Iron Lady, for which Meryl Streep won an Oscar. So that's a pretty good track record. But what I think is fascinating is that you've got this balance between realism and fairy tale because on because the idea of building a house is a fairy tale thing it's a dream nobody builds their own house and yet that's what's happening in the story there's also you can see a connection to witness you know the barn building scene in witness which frankly is the scene that everyone remembers in witness because it's the best scene it's like look they actually build the barn and there is some of that in what's happening in the building of the house and it's the balance that makes it work so it's it's got that fairy tale edge to it, but like all great fairy tales, it's completely rooted in reality and it has monsters, proper monsters. And it's interesting because I, I had seen it 
you know, I think a year ago now. And then I watched it again because um, Phil Lloyd was coming on the show. And of course, I, you know, I put my foot in it by saying, well, what about awards? And because Phil Lloyd said, well, we've missed the awards thing because it was put up for awards last, you know, for the last season. And of course, nobody saw it because the release didn't properly happen. Um, seeing it a second time round, it, it's kind of better even than I remember the first time, because I think that balance thing works so well. It's, as I keep saying, rooted. It's got the foundations of it, like the house itself. The foundations are rooted in reality. And the body of the house is in between that, you know, the idea of the dream and the, you know, and the fulfillment of the dream of freedom, but also being dragged back into something which is, you know, grim. And then the roof has its head in the air. I'm very pleased with that metaphor, which I just did literally off the top of my head. I enjoyed it very much. And I think it's good that it's finally getting to see the inside of a cinema because it is a film that deserved a, a cinema release. And it's a shame that it had so many delays.